I've gone a bit over 60. In this video, I'm going to tell you why the Suzuki Cappuccino is the best sports car of all time. Now, I know that's an exceedingly bold claim to make about a car, but um, I will deliver my reasons throughout the recording of this video. Uh, Suzuki Cappuccino was launched in 1991. Uh, it is a K car. It is built to the K car regs, which means it's 3.2 meters long, I think 1.8 meters wide and uh, the engine can be no more than 660 cc or about the equivalent of two cans of fizzy drink uh, the engine in this one is actually 657 cc it is three cylinders uh, it has a turbocharger and an intercooler to produce the maximum allowed power output for a k car of 63 brake horsepower at um, some quite bonkers rpm number uh, they are small they are revy they are hilarious it looks a bit like a miniature mx5 and it is a proper miniature sports car it has independent suspension all round it has uh, rack and pinion steering it is very much a miniature sports car i mean they also happen to be absolutely adorable just a cute little face um, projector headlamps on this one which dates from 1992 and uh, lovely alloy wheels as well and thankfully some good tires now the color on this one is non-original it has been resprayed yellow it was actually a, a kiwi car it was sold new in new zealand uh, and then um, came over here with the owner um, a couple of years later when he moved to queensland and has now made its way down to sydney i've uh, got a little reverse light separate here in the bumper uh, uk models had a fog light instead uh, the UK did actually get these as an official Suzuki car. You could go to your Suzuki dealer, you could buy a cappuccino. And uh, uh, over a thousand people did, and many more wanted one, but they struggled to meet um, changing uh, emissions regulations in 1995. So they were only sold in the UK for two years, 93 and 94, and uh, only in red or silver. In Japan, you had different colours available, although not this shade of bright yellow. And uh, um, it was even a second generation, which had a chain-driven camshaft on its crazy little triple engine, which I think we should have a look at, really. I think it's probably about time. Uh, so I'll have a quick preview of the interior, because we need to come over here. We need to open the glove box, which is tiny, and the release is somewhere in here. There we go all the good times those seats are going to be horrible to sit on it's over 30 degrees at the moment and i'm gonna to have to go and buy some sun cream because otherwise i will die now look how hilarious this is this tiny little twin cam 12 valve three cylinder engine it is absolutely diddy it's it's that long it's uh, hilarious so we've got fuel injection we've got a turbocharger hidden um down there somewhere I guess uh, we've got an intercooler here in front of the um, radiator and look how far back the engine sits so you've just got dead space here uh, Suzuki boasted that the cappuccino had a 50 50 weight distribution when it had two people aboard and um, two people making quite a difference to the overall weight of the car I imagine and uh, yeah just hilarious the engine level of engineering that went into these cars is quite remarkable and that's something we see throughout k cars as the autozam az1 which had gull wing doors and was a proper little k car supercar there is the mitsubishi pajero um oh what's the smallest one called the mini that's right uh, which has a full four-wheel drive system and um, dual range gearbox uh, i notice this one seems to have a heater delete I think the owner just doesn't drive it um, on rainy days uh, but you see you've got coil here distributor here all the intake plenum here oh these are hilarious motor vehicles let's have a look inside just before we look um, inside the car uh, there is room here in the boot for the roof panels for it is a targa top convertible uh, which I shall demonstrate well I won't demonstrate the panels because we haven't got them here but there is a boot it's a useful size until you fill it with roof panels um, so it is somewhat more practical than both the Honda Beat and the AutoZam AZ1 which is why I give it more stars 
uh, in that regard. Uh, the, this rear section does come up. Um, I've never done that before. I didn't ask the owner how it does it. So we shall, um, I'll put the ignition on because I imagine that's probably necessary. And uh, Oh, there we go. And now I can pull that up. I thought that was electronic, but it isn't. So now we've got a T-bar. Uh, or we will have a T-bar because there's a bar that goes down the middle and then two separate panels and uh, I suspect driving along that's just going to end up like a massive buffer but you'll notice it's got a heated rear window this is practical motoring uh, so um, presumably I'll do that and hold it down again there we go that's a lovely bit of kit um, right uh, let's jump aboard because I'm distracting myself jump aboard the hot leather seat that I should have put a towel on. Oh, that's hot. Uh, cool it down with my own body. It is dinky in here, but look at that rev counter. Uh, the red line starts at eight and a half grand. Uh, the owner's happier with seven, so we're gonna stick to that. Um, but uh, yeah, everything is there. It's just that everything is tiny. Uh, the speedometer doesn't work, so we've got um, a GPS to back up. But look at this tiny little gear lever. Uh, that, that's just hilarious. Standard Japanese heater control layout, as you'd expect. Um, this one's got a more modern head unit, 12 volt power outlet. Oh, didn't mean to lose that. So the cigarette lighter has gone missing. Uh, it looks like it would have actually been a cigarette lighter at some point. Uh, so we'll put that back in there. The tiniest little ashtray you can imagine. Electric window switches here, a little cubby box down here which you can't fit very much in and uh, the controls there for the uh, rear panel and uh, that looks like central locking is it oh no it's interior light uh, which i think is attached to that bar so we can't see it at the moment little shelf here for stowage and a couple of really supportive nice bucket seats um, but uh, really we're here to listen to this little engine Hers neatly into life. Uh, indicators right, as you'd probably expect. Uh, heated rear window is about the only button we've got here. There was air conditioning. It isn't working, which is a shame, because otherwise I'd have the roof on. But we can do a t wiper test. Oh yeah, it's only slightly getting me. There we go, no triangle of doom, good wiping pattern. Uh, much as you'd expect from a Japanese car. Right, I'm gonna have to get you strapped up in the head mount because there is nowhere else to mount you. But I'll do that and then we should get driving. As you can see, it's um, pretty cozy in here, knees alert, but I have actually got somewhere to rest my clutch foot. Uh, they really do think of everything, the Japanese. Uh, put the key out of my pocket, that was a mistake. That's the wrong key. View map so we get speedo and away we go and already this is just a hilarious motor vehicle no power steering you could get it on the later ones I don't think you really need it It's amazing how much attention this car has got, even in the time um, I've just been doing my little walk around. It's uh, such a cute little car, I think people love it. You can hear quite a noisy transmission. And quite a sweet little noise as well, but um, bear with me, we'll get this engine warmed up and we can enjoy more of a drive. But why do I say this is the best sports car in the world? Uh, the answer is pretty simple. Uh, channel motto, one of the many, is um, power, less is more. And um, I don't think that has ever been more true than in the world of on-road cars. There are certainly sports cars with a lot more power. Remember, 63 brake horsepower. Um, but, uh, yeah, you can exploit every single horsepower in this car. And uh, it works well as an entire car. I mean, going over those bumps, it's, it even rides pretty well. 
it's all well and good having your Porsche Cayman or whatever it was but uh, yeah this this car is a lot more usable you find the, the problem with most cars especially sports cars is you cannot use the power they have too much of the stuff great on a racetrack but um, on the public highway speed limits are a lot lower so um, you need something a lot smaller and it's an absolute cliche but the Suzuki Cappuccino really is the MG midget of its time the MG midget of the 1990s but I just think that tiny little engine 657 cc oh wow look at that for a view and um, yeah it just produces very very usable punchy power uh, which I'm gonna demonstrate because we're getting things warmed up now uh, by accelerating up this hill so can you have fun even in a 50 km an hour speed limit which is 30 miles an hour Oh yeah, I think so. Oh no, a quarter off boost. Have to keep those revs up. And this is my point. Here I am in a 50 limit. Um, having a great time. The steering is so responsive and so direct. And uh, not even slightly heavy now we're up to speed because there is so little weight in the car. And yeah, the ride is really supple for a sports car. Got no um, scuttle shake going on. It feels really solid and robust. Got a little light, that was a cockatoo, that comes on when the turbo starts boosting. This is hilarious. Because of course, K cars were built to be fun in city driving. So, um, they need to be fun at just 30 miles an hour and this one certainly is there's a lot more to explore potential wise but you know we'll find some faster roads in a bit and have even more of a giggle wow oh that appears to be the end of this road so we shall do a turning circle demonstration and it's tiny. Now I don't believe this one has a limited slip diff. I think that came as an option on the second gen. But frankly I can't imagine you've really got enough power to break traction. It's a surprisingly refined noise I think. And uh, these engines can be tuned up. They were limited to 63 horsepower by the K-Car regs. But um, you could actually um, tune them up to quite a ludicrous degree. I believe over 100 brake horsepower is pretty easy to do. And the engine seemed to take it, which is especially um, amusing. <laughs> oh, this is absolute hilarity. I mean, how much fun would a McLaren or a Porsche 911 be? in a 50 mile an hour speed limit it'd be tedious look at this Woo oh man i feel alive at 30 miles an hour that is why this car has my claim for the best sports car in the world but it isn't just designed for the city streets so we'll go and find some roads that are a bit more potent You do feel a little vulnerable, to be honest. I was just in a car park and, you know, SUVs tower above you. And it takes some getting into because it is so dainty. You have to squeeze yourself down into it. It's a bit like an MG Midget, but once you're in, the driving position is lovely. Oh, oh an entire 60. I've gone a bit over 60. Oh, nice Holden. Yeah, 
Yeah, 6,000 revs is about um, 60 kilometers an hour, it seems. Yes, here we go then. Foot flat to the floor. And that's us at 80, woo! Oh, this is hilarious. I think actually a, a bit of an induction kit and maybe a slightly sportier exhaust might um, help extract a little more noise. It's actually a bit more refined than um, I imagined, but it's got that classic little three pot scream. Um, I love three cylinder engines. They're so fizzy and so much fun. There we go, we're heading towards Liverpool. And of course, being the other side of the world, they don't get quite the same amount of rain here. So um, these cappuccinos don't rust anywhere near as much as they do back home. Whoa, that's sharper than I thought. Oh. This car is hilarious. I so wish I'd bought one of these when they were fairly cheap. You could buy them for like two, three thousand pounds. I even test drove one at some point, but I just couldn't quite commit to it. Uh, back in the days when I actually had a reasonable amount of money. Oh no, traffic lights have made us stop. We'll have to accelerate again. I just love it but it, it, it's a sports car with very little in the way of compromise I mean sure it's not great for going to the DIY store and hauling home a shed but um, for what I do it's more than practical there is a boot which is lockable uh, there's a decent amount of space in the passenger footwell I can carry one person and uh, I don't often even do that so wasn't really long enough was it oh I love this car to bits but it's precisely because you can extract every one of those horsepowers that makes this car hilarious you can absolutely hammer it and all you're doing is keeping up with the traffic uh, it's just brilliant now I will say these cars are actually fairly complex lots of suspension bushes and stuff and I uh, have driven below par examples where they're all a bit worn out and clunky. This feels tight as a drum. It's on 143,000 kilometers, but uh, has um, had a fair bit of restoration work done and uh, feels all the better for it. It feels brand new. Right, are you ready to do a quick UE? And we'll head back the other way. <laughs> see what I mean this is the best sports car in the world well that was a huge amount of fun the Suzuki Cappuccino is the tiny car with a huge heart it is a proper exciting little sports car in miniature it is tiny and uh, I love it for it it's just um amazing but a really good really soundly engineered car it's not just a gimmick it properly is a miniaturized sports car um, it drives really well it's really refined it's um, comfortable even um, it's perhaps more than you expect of this um, tiny little thing um, so i shall say thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed that as much as i have and i look forward to seeing you in a future video farewell